I would be remiss if I didn't leave out President Donald Trump's role in making sure that this Ukraine aid actually happened. There's been a lot of uh, you know, papering over by the MAGA base as to how exactly Trump went from a guy who spoke uh, against, uh, for Ukrainian peace Remember in the famous CNN moment on the town hall when he said, I'm for you know stopping the dying. I want to find peace. I would have peace there in a second. The uh, Democratic liberal media is like, oh, well, he would pull money away from Ukraine on day one. Well, you know, he also was the one who shipped a lot of lethal aid to Ukraine back in 2015. But Mike Johnson and others and Lindsey Graham basically convinced Trump to endorse some BS lend-lease loan program to the most corrupt and poor nation in all of Europe. And let's not forget Lindsey Graham here now saying that it was Trump, Trump himself, is the one responsible for getting this through the House. Let's take a listen. So with all due respect to uh, Senator Vance, he's wrong. We were told within four days, Key would fall. But is he wrong about the math? Yeah, is he, he's, he's is he wrong about wrong. the production? He, yeah, he's wrong about the whole concept that we can't deal with multiple problems. In World War II, we fought the Germans and the Japanese. We have an industrial base that needs to be retooled. But the uh, Ukrainian military, with our help, has killed about 50% of the combat power of the Russians. If you pull the plug on Ukraine because you don't have enough capability, there goes Taiwan. Ukrainians are fighting like tigers. This aid package uh, has a loan component to it. This would not have passed without Donald Trump. I want to thank the House Speaker and Akeem Jeffries working together in a bipartisan fashion to give weapons to Ukraine to fight a fight that matters to us. And President Trump has created a loan component to this package. It gives us leverage down the road. So this idea that we can't help Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan at the same time, I reject that. I want to thank President Trump for making this to go through. Now, listen, according to MAGA defenders, Crystal, Trump has been bamboozled. Trump can Trump cannot fail. He can only be failed. Mm -hmm. And so Always. Lindsey Graham went down. And look, Trump is an idiot. Like, let's be honest. On policy, he just doesn't care. He doesn't care about He cares about basically one thing, trade and maybe immigration, on depending on the day. Uh, and so when Lindsey Graham goes down there and he's like, it'd be a loan. It wouldn't be giving it to them. Trump's like, wow, a loan. Well, that's great as a businessman. And so what do they do? They write in some bullshit loan into the text. And then they don't tell you that Biden is the president after he signs it. Oh, and he can just forgive the entire loan. Oh, and by the way, the loan is interest-free and it has an indefinite period on when you supposedly get paid back. And so is it a loan if there's no, no enforcement terms and there's no interest or <laughs> is it a gift? It's a gift. That's what's happening here. And so it's a complete fake out. And so Trump is, there's two options. Trump is either too dumb to know the difference between a fake loan and a real loan and then allow himself to get bamboozled or he supports shipping uh, weapons to Ukraine. Either has the same net effect to me, so I don't care. So it's Trump's fault that this this all went through. Yeah. And of course, Republican voters, they're like freaking sheep, you know? They're just gonna sit there and eat the grab, be like, oh, it's so terrible what the liberal media is saying about Mr. Trump here. It's like, no, this is on Trump. Lindsey Graham ain't the rhino. Trump is, Trump is the one who decided to let it pass. So let's all just be real clear about what's gonna happen. If Trump gets reelected, who does he actually listen to? And is he still you know, so dumb to be able to allow himself to be fooled? And if you are fine with that, cool but just be real honest about what you're voting for. Yeah, they yeah. cope consistently whenever Trump goes against what, you know, the what he promised the base. Mm -hmm. It's always, oh, it's not his fault. It's Never Kushner's his fault. fault. It's this person, it's a deep state, it's this, it's that. Like, this is an adult man yes. who was president of the United States. At some point, he has to be responsible for his own actions. And, you know, so I, Marjorie Taylor Greene, she was against all of this, and she's been very, you know, outspoken, et cetera, et cetera. And on this, I'm actually, you know, on the same yeah, I'm, side I'm of her. Marjorie. But she never points the finger at Donald Trump and his culpability here. That's somehow left out of her analysis when, yeah, you got Lindsey Graham there on TV saying, listen, I want to thank Mike Johnson, mm -hmm. Hakeem Jeffries, and Donald Trump. Wouldn't have happened without Trump. And somehow that gets left out of the uh, critique here from those on the Republican side yeah. who are making a critique. It's genius. And uh, again, we have the evidence that Trump endorsed it because he literally went to, uh, tr Mike Johnson went down to Mar-a-Lago, did a joint press conference with Donald Trump where Trump endorses on tape the so-called loan idea. Let's take a listen. They're talking about it and we're thinking about making it in the form of a loan instead of just a gift. We keep handing out gifts of billions and billions of dollars and we'll take a look at it. 
But much more importantly to me is the fact that Europe has to step up and they have to give money. We have, they have to equalize. If they don't equalize, I'm very upset about it because they're affected much more than we are. The Ukraine situation would have never happened if I was president, would have never, ever happened. And everybody says that, including Democrats, that it happened to such an outrage. People, millions of people are dead right now, both sides. Millions of people are dead. People keep pointing to that as if it's some evidence for why he's changed his position. No, he, okay, I agree with him on Europe. It doesn't matter. That's not what you said. What matters is that you endorsed the loan. Now, for example, Matt Gates and others were trying to claim that what we're about to show you was a Trump saying he was against the bill. Let's put this up there on the screen. He says, why isn't Europe giving more money to help Ukraine? Why is it the United States is over $100 billion into the war? And we can have an ocean between us and a separation. Why can't Europe equalize? Blah, 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 blah. As everyone agrees, Ukrainian survival and strength should be much more important to Europe than us, but it is also important to us. Oh, it is also important to us. Now, the only thing that he's even slightly critical of is when he says, I am the only one who speaks for me. And while it's a total mess caused by crooked Joe Biden, blah, 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 if I were president, this war would have never started. That was because Mike Johnson was going all over Washington saying, hey, if you don't support this bill, then you're against President Trump. But he didn't come out against the bill. So look, let's be very clear. Trump came out very, clear, uh, very, very clearly up against the border aid, the, the border deal previously, and he killed it, right? So he also came out against FISA and he killed that whenever he killed the vote. He had the full capacity to kill this bill if he wanted to, mm -hmm. and he didn't, which means he's responsible for letting this pass. He endorsed it, and now he should bear the consequences just like Joe Biden does. Whenever And w whenever he's president too, we should not expect anything else from him. Yeah, and please spare me the whole like Donald Trump is the anti-war candidate bullshit. There, there is no anti-war candidate in terms of Biden and Trump or in terms of RFK Jr. You could look at Jill Stein and Cornell West, but you know, likelihood is that they're going to have a relatively minimal impact. You know, with regards to the comments about Europe also, uh -huh. Michael Tracy, who shout out to him, he's a, always does a great job actually reading through these bills and pulling out yes, the important pieces and, you know, outlining some of these key bipartisan dynamics. But, you know, calling for Europe to spend more on NATO or calling for Europe to spend more on Ukraine isn't a position in favor of, you know, stepping away from NATO or stepping away from Ukraine and trying to bring that war to a close. It's a position in favor of more funding. Uh -huh. So he's not saying we don't, we shouldn't fund it. We should move forward. He's saying we, obviously, we're going to continue funding it. We just want the Europeans to also fund it additional amounts. So, you know, being hard on Europe is actually not consistent with a um, position in favor of we need to be looking for an offer and we need to be looking for some sort of a diplomatic conclusion to this. And, you know, I will, with regard to Ukraine, I'll just, I'll never be over the fact that we undercut those original diplomatic negotiations because now it is in nowheresville. You know, now the deal that they would get would be far inferior. You know, now there is no real negotiating leverage for Putin and the Russia. At that point, they were on the back mm -hmm. foot. Things hadn't gone the way that they, you know, planned. It didn't look good. So it would have been a much stronger negotiating position. Now it's just an endless mess. And that's the approach they're taking to it is let's just continue to fund this. We don't need a plan to, to conclude it. We're just going to continue sending an entire, you know, multiple generations of Ukrainian men to the slaughter. And then obviously, you know, with regard to Israel, it's just a horror. Yeah. It's just a horror. It's an indefensible horror. Um, the last thing I want to make sure to mention, which it's incredible this isn't even really in the show today, but, you know, this whole escalation with Iran, which I think was very intentionally timed as well, is part of how the Israel aid was able to sail through as well. Because guess what? You know, suddenly, because Israel starts this provocation by uh, assassinating top Iranian commanders at their consulate building— which is, you know, a dramatic contravention of the Vienna Convention, international law, et cetera. They do that. Iran responds. Israel's responding. Nothing gets the bipartisan consensus going more quickly than one of the official bad guy nations, you know, going after our, our big ally in the Middle East. So when we're talking about that, we're not talking about the suffering in Gaza. We're not talking about the World Central Kitchen aid workers who were just massacred. We're not talking about the apparently imminent in ground invasion of Rafah, which we'll, we'll get to in just a bit. And so that's also part 
of the cover that was provided that allows this aid to sail through as well. Yes. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right, we're subscriber funded, we're building something new, we wanna replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.